Hi guys, and welcome back to another video, or welcome if this is your first time here. My name is Dana at my mama took four, and on my channel, I love sharing our homeschooling journey as well as just simple living and motherhood. But if that is something that interests you, I'd love to have you join our family, and you can do so by subscribing down below. For today's video, I'm actually going to be doing part two of my q and I will have the first part I did. I'll have that link down below if you want to go watch that. And if you couldn't tell from the time of this video, this is going to be a very long video <laughs> because one of the questions that came in, I really just kind of felt led to dive deep into it, to really just discuss it and in a way to encourage other mamas who might be on the same path as well. However, with this question in particular that again will be addressed at the end of the video, I also felt like I wasn't really qualified enough to answer it. So I'm having my very first guest, which is going to be my mom. Actually, she's going to be at the end of this video in hopes of encouraging the mama who wrote this question or asked this question, as well as all the other mamas who might be struggling with the same thing as well. So I'm really excited, but because this video is going to be long, I'm going to try to answer the questions in the first part of this video, relatively short, but we'll see how that goes. Anyways, with all that being said, let's go ahead and jump into today's video. question is, I wanted to ask this last time too, but what do your kids like to watch? I really struggle with quality shows that won't teach them bad behavior. This is such a challenging thing if you do screens in your home. Very, very challenging. There aren't very many shows out there. We actually ended up cutting screen time out completely except for Friday night and Saturday night. So typically Friday night we'll have a family night movie night and then Saturday night that's when the kiddos will typically watch a show or something. So a little bit shorter, normally like a 20, 30 minute show. And we have been loving that. We love not having the distractions and the stimulation and stuff during the week. Now typically before the actual week we would do like a show in the evenings and especially in the winter times but cutting them out completely has been just really really refreshing to us and it keeps the few shows that we do watch more exciting I think because they're saved for a specific time of the week so they're not getting bored off of one show if that makes sense so a couple of the shows that we love watching right now and this is just our current season and that is just a couple of channels here on YouTube, actually. One of them is called Outdoor Boys. It's a real life kind of father and son. They do a lot of outdoor survival. They do camping. They do hiking. They explore the whole world. And it's a really fun way because the, the actual family relationships are very, very positive, like the father taking his sons out and things like that. And the father and the mother have a really good and sweet relationship as well. And so it's a really good for the kiddos to witness another healthy family relationship, also, but in also real life and living the adventurous spirit and everything like that. And and that's been really fun and they've also learned some great skills as well whether that be hunting fishing starting like little campfire just really really good life type skills um, that are very very valuable so outdoor boys is one of our favorites and they have a ton a ton of videos on their youtube channel and we have just grown to really really love their videos and then of course my kiddos love hudson's playground it's another really cutesy little it's like a, also like a father son only on a farm and a little boy likes playing with his tractors and things like that and that's another one that is such a positive happy family relationship and it really shows the happiness between the father and his children as well and so we love watching that shows and the kids love all the tractors and everything that is in that show so those are the two main ones that we watch on youtube we don't have netflix or hulu or we even well the one thing that we do want to probably get is a youtube premium maybe so we don't have to worry about the ads and stuff which would be great but it's also just another expense so we're not sure for only using it a couple times a week if it's beneficial but it probably is honestly because it will protect the kids from seeing what we probably don't want them to be seeing anyway we do have amazon prime as well the kiddos on that one that there's not a lot good out there <laughs> there's not Honestly, my kiddos love Wildcat, but for the most part, my kiddos and just what they're interested in, most of their like favorite things are on YouTube. So yeah, those are kind of our favorites. I know that's probably not a big help. I'm gonna see if I can maybe find a blog or an article talking about some really good like edifying type shows and I'll have that link down below if you wanna go take a look at it. The next question is, have you considered making a video on your discipline slash parenting style? And yes, I would actually love to do that. It's actually something that my husband and I have been talking a lot. This is a series. I'd probably be a whole series because it kind of is a little bit linked together <laughs> but it's actually one that him and I would probably do together and our favorite ways that we like to just overall discipline and parent our children we're definitely more of like the gentling parent type method but 
don't get it confused like the passive parenting that's not what it is either <laughs> and like the charlotte mason type of approach to child rearing and habit training and things like that so that's a whole another video i probably am going to start like a little mini series on the whole habit training thing and how to train different habits and like really yeah child training starting with the habits and everything and how beneficial and amazing that has been for us and especially as a mama how much peace it provides the home when you instill those habits so definitely definitely we'll do an upcoming video about that one so the next one is how many hours a day do you homeschool and do you guys watch tv in your home which we just talked about so how many hours a day do you homeschool we normally don't do any more than two hours a day right now so that is because we are just have we just have a kindergartner and a first grader so that's why but we typically really try to stay under that two hour mark and the only reason why we would ever go either at or above that two hour mark is if toddler needs change baby needs change and toddler needs change baby needs change so if I, as a mama, have a lot of personal distractions, it does take us a while because typically when mama leaves a room or mama gets distracted, that's the kiddo's sign to be like, okay, break time, <laughs> even though I'm like leaving the room just for a minute to change the baby. So yeah, it's it's funny how that always works, but yeah, definitely try, we try to keep it within an hour and a half to two hours at the most. The next one is you mentioned in your last Q&A that you went to college, what was your major? So yeah, so I was actually, I guess back in the day, back in the day, it's like 12 years ago, but I was in early childhood development major. I think now it's early childhood education. And so I always confuse the two. Anyway, I was early childhood education major and I actually only made it to my junior year before quitting to get married. <laughs> so I did not graduate, but that was what I intended to do. I get a degree in, I should say. So another question was, do you think you will homeschool for all of the grades? And that is, Lord willing, I would love to. I honestly really, really would. Now, being a second generation homeschooler, I've kind of walked through the high school years being homeschooled. I've seen like the hands-on, like the closeness and family relationships that it provides when you do homeschool K-12. And I love to be able to provide that to my children. I am so excited to see them grow, to be the one to teach them. I think one of the most honestly beautiful things about homeschooling and being a homeschooling parent in general is just like when your little ones begin to read and they're reading fluently and on their own and you're just like I taught them that <laughs> it's so fun and so when they get a new math concept down or when they memorize something I don't know why it's so fun but I I love that part and I like being the one to see them grow and to spend that extra time with them otherwise I would never see them during the day and so I count it to be a huge blessing to be able to homeschool them and I love it so lord willing yes for all the grades the next question is are you still using alpha phonics and the victory drill books for any part of learning to read or just CLE so yes and no <laughs> so for the victory drill book we use every Friday for my first grader and it's a great great program if you're not familiar with it I'll have the video I designated to this kind of I don't want to say, yeah, I guess it is an actual curriculum, but I'll have that link down below if you do want to take a look at it. But it is a fantastic program to help with your kiddos reading speeds. It helps kind of like put the words together very quickly. It's a very effective reading program. It's one that I have used in combination. Depending on what seasons we are at in life, that is the only thing that we will do. So for example, after we welcomed a baby number four into our family, we were very, very busy. And so the only thing we really did was Victory Drill Books. So that was just a great way to keep learning like their reading speeds, adding on new words, new phonetic sounds and things like that. So I loved it. And But right now for my first grader, we only use it one day a week, which is on Fridays for him. And again, it, that is he's using it really strictly for building his reading speed but yes we are doing it right now for alpha phonics we used that last semester to really introduce my kindergartner to reading loved it an amazing program if your kiddos have no reading experience and if you want to touch lightly onto blending letters alpha phonics is a great straight to the point program and i find it to be very effective as well and again i think yes i also did a designated video on alpha phonics as well a great program i'll have it linked down below if you do want a more thorough look at it but to answer that question right now we're only doing victory drill book so another question is are you going to stay with cle for second grade and yes i love cle again you're probably so tired of me talking about it but i really find the program to be extremely effective it's also very gentle there's enough practice while also not being too much but then if there is too much on some days you don't feel bad crossing them out because there is too much i know that didn't make any sense at all but i love a program that gives you enough practice to where you can actually cross things out if there's too much versus ones that give you like half a page and then the child doesn't retain any information at all from it so i found this program to be extremely extremely effective very gentle yet straight to the point open and go 
great for the homeschool parent, great for the homeschool family who does want that open and go style. And for me personally, being in the little years, it's just been a huge blessing is using this. And so, but again, every child is different. Some children might not like it, so I mean, that's okay. So for the second grade, I actually already did purchase the reading two and the language arts two and the math two for my son for this fall. I typically do like to go ahead and purchase their curriculum when we're finishing up the kind of the year before, if that makes sense. That way throughout the summer, I kind of already know what we're doing. I know what's working, not working by then and everything like that. So those are things I have already purchased for him. Now typically for curriculum, I don't purchase a formal history, science, social studies type curriculum especially for the little years. I know that will change as they get older, but right now, since they're in the young, young ages of just like the beginning grade schools, like I'll have a first grader and second grader, I'm doing other things, which I'll share with you and like uh, curriculum things and that we're changing video. But yes, we are planning. That's a long way to say <laughs> we are planning on doing the second grade CLE. So I'm going to go ahead and get to two more questions really quick before we are going to switch days. It's funny because this part of the video is actually pre-filmed. When my mom's coming in, it's actually the following week. So yeah, that's where we're going to, it's going to look totally different here in a minute, but I'm going to answer a couple more questions before we get to that part of the video. Um, but the first question is, do you get overwhelmed with four kids, homemaking and homeschool? I only have three right now and it's hard. Yes, I do. And that's okay. I'm going to share this really story and I, I feel like this was like a huge answer to prayer that I met this mama, but um, we were all at a thrift store. I think it was just Goodwill, maybe two weeks ago now. And this mom of nine kids came up to me. She was the sweetest. She was a retired mama, so she didn't have anyone left at home. She said something that I thought, I thought to be like really profound. And she reminded me that it does not matter if you have one or 12 children, you will always at some point, even every day, feel overwhelmed at some point because every single person is living an experience that is new to them. And she's like, you know, I was overwhelmed at one child, but it's also the same amount of overwhelm at nine because even seven, eight, and nine, like they're different numbers, of course, but it's also a new season of adding a newborn, adding the toddler, adding a newborn. And she's like, you know, no matter what season it is, no matter how many kids you have, because that is a new season to you, it's going to be overwhelming. And it doesn't, do you value or, or devalue it or discredit you because you see someone else having more kids and oh my goodness, they're amazing. So she's like, don't think of me as amazing really, because like you are walking this new season too. And it was, oh my goodness, it was just something I needed. It's like, I just, I really needed that. I really needed someone who, in my mind, is like, how do you have like nine kids, 13 and under, and not be like drowning at some point in some time? That was such an encouragement for me because I also am exactly like you to the mama who asked this question, who I'm also feeling overwhelmed. And I look at people who have more kids than me and I'm like, wow, how do you do that? <laughs> like it's such, it's such a, and she was so right though. And it was very true when she said, no matter how many you have, it's new to you. It's a new season. It's a new challenge, and it's challenging because it's it's a new thing. And I agree because you know after baby number one, which was challenging because it's a first time mama, baby number two, oh, there's a juggle. You have to add two, three, outnumbered. When we added four, I felt lost, and I feel like it took me about five months to really find my groove and my balance again. But I felt lost for months because I was just did not know how in the world I was going to homeschool with a toddler and newborn and two school age and how in the world I was going to do this and this with a toddler and newborn and two school age and you just do and it becomes normal and it's again and a lot of, and I think a lot of the practical ways that has helped me from being overwhelmed like living in overwhelm instead of having an overwhelming moment because for me I feel like I can have those overwhelming moments but I also don't want to live in an overwhelming state, an overwhelmed state of mind all day long, if that makes sense. So a few of the things I have done, practically speaking, are instilling just simple methods and things that work for me. And that's whether that be crossing things off of my to-do list so my mental clarity is empty and so I can actually have like the clarity I need to be with my children. And you know, whether that be, I love the fly lady cleaning method. It took me for ever to get that really down because there was so much decluttering that had to be done but decluttering really helped me maintain peace in the home and things like that. And then habit training with the children also, again, like helped build that peaceful atmosphere that we needed in our home. So there were so many ways that I tried to implement and practical things I tried to implement that really helped me overall and not living in the constant overwhelm, 
but there are still moments every single day to answer your question yes that I do get overwhelmed and that's okay like you know that's okay and so in those moments again I need to make a whole nother video on this taking a step back realizing it's okay if you need to be overwhelmed that's honestly why I don't leave the house much because <laughs> whenever I do it's just when I feel very frazzled and not really at peace so yeah, just uh, sticking close to home right now in little years because yes, I do get overwhelmed very easily right now. Last thing, and I thought this mom was so sweet to ask me, and she said, what was the last thing that you did for you? So thank you for asking that. That was so nice of you. Um, the one, th the last thing I did for myself, I typically, and I don't know if this is this counts or not, <laughs> but I honestly, the things that I like to do for myself is taking that 10, 15 minutes in the morning and getting ready in the morning, listening to worship music, reading my Bible, drinking my coffee while it's hot, learning to just sit down and enjoy it while it's hot and get ready for the day before the kiddos wake up and really taking care of myself and I feel like when I get up earlier before the kiddos whether that be 10 minutes or 15 or 20 minutes if I am able to get up and going before the kiddos in a way that's not only serving me and my own state of peace and my own peace of mind that's also serving them as well because they are able to have a happy mother that greets them so a huge thing is me getting up in the morning and getting myself ready for the day how I take care of myself some mornings. Anyways, thank you guys so much for asking these questions. There is one more question that we are going to address and we are going to jump into the next day and get onto that question. All right, so this is take two. <laughs> we attempted to do this video two weeks ago. I think about two weeks yeah, ago. I think so. The first part of the video that you'll be seeing, or I should say this is like future me here, but the first part of the video that you saw was three weeks ago. We tried to film this two weeks ago and then I went to export it and edit it and there was no sound. So here we are again. again. <laughs> yeah. I do appreciate you being willing to be here again. Uh, I really, really do. It's a, I know it's a, not a <laughs> normal thing. So yes, if you guys are new here, I'm actually a second generation homeschooler. I'm at the middle of seven mm -hmm. and we have six siblings. I should say I have six siblings. She's my mom. If you are also new here and you have one high schooler left. One high schooler left. He's 15 yeah. years old and he is the joy of our life right now. Yeah. Love him to pieces and yeah. I know what I'm going to do when I'm done. Yes, <laughs> I know. The reason why I wanted you and I know I've already talked to her about this a lot, but the reason why I wanted her to talk about what we're going to be talking about today is because I feel like you have a lot of wisdom and insight at um, the homeschooling journey and motherhood journey all together because you have walked it so many times, but you've also seen it to completion so many times. And that's something that I am not experienced in yet. Mm -hmm. I have four littles. My oldest is seven, so seven and under. And I know what kind of stress and kind of like what we'll be talking about today has to do with like the little years. But having not walked the whole picture, it's hard for me to see the big picture where then you can see what the fruits of your labor have yes. been. So that's the kind of perspective that I wanted from her is to get the big picture of what we're going to be talking yes. about. So we are going to be talking about overcoming angry and stressed out parenting. There was a mama who actually wrote this question in the Q&A talking about how she comes from a background of angry and stressed out parents. I'm going to insert a screenshot here of what that question was. I'm filming on my phone today, so that's why. <laughs> and so I'm going to insert that here so you can kind of see where we're coming from. But I really felt led to kind of tackle this, especially with her, with her kind of insight on this matter. And yeah, we're just going to talk about that today and dive into that. But do you want to yeah. open us up in prayer? Okay, I think we'll do that. Yeah, that Get started. Good. Yeah. Okay. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to speak truth and speak it in love. And may the words that we speak be gentle to those that hear and speak to their hearts so that they might turn to you with the issues that they are experiencing. We ask these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I think that yeah. um, at my age, when you say with the wisdom and experience, yes. you've heard people say, I wish I could go back and do it again. Yes. Yeah. Only I want to take the 60 year old wisdom with me. Yes. You know, we don't get to do that. Unfortunately. We do not get to do that. Unfortunately. So, yeah. but there is that part of scripture where the older women are supposed to teach yes. the younger women Tied and we women. can yeah. um, share those experiences yeah. and say, watch out for this or look out for that. Yes. Um, and so maybe some of that is what we're going to do. Yeah. Today. So I'm going to start out with my little piece of humor is that whenever I'm talking, um, I think humor is really good when we are stressed out yeah you have to laugh sometimes so yeah. here is something that you can all um, kind of dwell on i promise to pay attention during school 
and I promise not to complain about the lessons, and I promise never to yell or hit or pinch, and I promise not to have temper tantrums and to always be good and to set a good example to the children because I am the homeschool teacher. Yeah. <laughs> so, they're just perfect. There are That's times perfect. when, you know, it says, I promise never to yell or hit or pinch mm -hmm. and I have temper tantrums and to always be good and set a good yeah. example because you don't walk into your classroom, your table or wherever you're teaching every day and just have this joyful spirit every yeah. day because yeah. there are ups and downs in life. So I think uh, today, as I've had time to think about mm -hmm. this question, um, we're going to talk about the difference in a heritage and a legacy. Mm -hmm. And a heritage is what is given to us. We just don't, can't do anything about that. It's, mm -hmm. it's the ancestors, it's the, the family members, the ancestors that have gone before. It is our heritage. And what type of people, background, place, or whatever that we come from, it's our heritage. A legacy, on the other hand, is what we leave mm -hmm. to someone. So and more power over that. More, yes, and we have more power over the legacy that we're going to leave um, than the heritage that we've been given, because we had nothing to do with the heritage, but we have everything to do with the legacy. Yes. So when we're talking about overcoming an angry spirit, we have to understand that, especially because the question pertained to someone that had um, been parented by yes. angry parents. And that's the hardest cycle. That, that is a very hard cycle to break. Yes. And if you were parented by um, parents that had an anger issue, then it's a good chance that they also were parented mm -hmm. by angry parents. Yeah. And who knows how far back that generation goes to because we just keep rolling mm -hmm. in the same way. So we can stop it. And so we want to um, talk about um, heritage and legacy, and legacy being the most important thing mm -hmm. that we can leave our children. So when we are, when we want to do a different thing, yeah. we have to set out to do a different thing, mm -hmm. and it has to be in the forefront of our mind all the time. And I know that as a as a parent, we tell our children all the time, "Stop it! Stop it! Stop it!" They're yeah. arguing. Stop it! They, yeah. you know, they're they're you know, just stop it. There yeah. are two magic words. So we're going to kind of turn that in on ourselves as yeah. well. If we are having those days when we're just stressed out and that little child has no idea what yeah. is wrong with mommy. Yeah. So it's really not the job of your five-year-old to fix you. It's not, no. So we kind of have to look in the mirror and say to ourselves, stop it mm -hmm. and gather ourselves and yeah. move forward in the moment um, and because it's, it is hard. I, especially when it's like looking at yourself in the mirror, it's not just like that's it's not the kid's responsibility, but you don't ever want them to feel like your happiness is their responsibility. Right. It and if not. they are struggling with either a concept or a school concept, because this is something I struggle with in the little years, like especially teaching either to read or new math concepts, mm -hmm. and they're not getting it quickly or as quickly as I think it should be, then they think that they're responsible for pleasing me or making me proud. Yeah. When in reality, it's like, no, that's yes. not their job. <laughs> Well, so our, make me our son, our, our youngest son that she was talking about, Derek, he's 15. And uh, the other day he said, Mom, mm -hmm. um, you, you're almost done. You know, you, you, you never yes. imagined that you would be here, you know, at this moment. Yeah. And so there's a nine year spread between Derek and the next child. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, and I said, it, it never bothered me. The mm -hmm. reality came when I realized I was going to have to teach reading again. Yes. You just start all <laughs> over again. <laughs> he had a really good laugh yeah. about that because, you know, yeah. you're just doing it over and over. And so yeah. when I'm done, uh, when we are completely finished with our homeschooling, I'll have a 43-year homeschooling mom yes. journey. Yes. And that has yeah. been the entire lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So it's it's been a good thing. You learn more about yourself. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 100%. What happens you when you see, see yourself in that child's yes. behavior? Yes. Oh, I was talking that about is that devastating. <laughs> I was talking about that last night with Josh about oh, so Oliver is worrying about something. And I was laying in bed last night and I was like, oh, I'm really worried that Oliver's picking up like this trait or whatever. <laughs> and he's like, what trait? I'm like, my bad trait. <laughs> yeah, those oh, yeah. are those are realities yeah. that, that we deal with. Mm -hmm. And so, okay, so after stop it, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I yeah. put some thoughts down here that are very random, but um, it may 
resonate with somebody. So just one little saying at a time here. Uh, the first one is to think about what you are doing, saying, your body language, your facial expressions, and your voice tone. Just stop and think about what that is. Oh, it's so powerful too. Yeah. The next one is you can't change what you don't confront. Mm -hmm. So the person that submitted this question for us to consider mm -hmm. um, is admitting. Yeah. And they're obviously wanting to confront that challenge. Yeah. And so to that person that wrote this question, that is an excellent first step. And anyone else that might be listening to how to overcome that angry spirit because it's been passed down to you in your heritage, we want to stop it mm -hmm. so that we can work on a legacy that our children will have of grace and love yeah. and and a beauty. No greater that, gift. To have. No greater gift. That, yeah. Okay. And so you can't change what you don't confront. So the next thing is you can change anything at any time. You just have to do the work. Yeah. <laughs> Easier said than done. Easier said yeah. than done. But if we if we stop it, everything that we try, you know, a, a new a skill, a new hobby, a new, you know, it, there's that time of change and transition. Mm -hmm. We can make it happen if we work at it. Yeah. You can practice your violin and get good at mm -hmm. it. Remember all those hours? Yes. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Oh, it's so, so worth it, though. Yeah, it is. It's been very rewarding. And so um, we can change anything at any time. We just have to do the work, and it's a personal work. Yeah. We're not trying to make light of a, of a serious issue that someone has to overcome, yeah. but the reality is it comes from your inner being yeah. to make that change. Yeah. Okay. The next one is somebody somewhere is depending on you to do what God has called you to do. Mm -hmm. Whether it's just our children right in our own home. And now on this side of parenting and homeschooling, I can see the 40 years that I put in so far mm -hmm. has prepared me even for today. Yeah. You know, and so somebody somewhere is depending on you to do what God has called you to do. Yeah. So we need to not be dwelling back here uh behind that closed door that's passed, but moving forward. Change what you are doing or change your mindset about it. Yeah. So that's an interesting one in terms of, of home education, especially. Uh, we can get frustrated because mm -hmm. I could teach algebra all day long, Yeah. <laughs> but maybe the child doesn't want to learn algebra and that's yeah. a struggle for them. So, okay, so my thing mm -hmm. is not his thing. Right. So we have to not get frustrated because, well, why can't you get this? Yeah. Uh, this is an easy thing. Yeah. Why can't you get this? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. um, we have to change our mindset about it and say, well, it's okay because that child does this and this and this way better than I do. Yeah. And I am not that child. And the seven children that I have and the one husband that I have are nothing like me yeah. per se. And then um, everybody is different with their own talents and gifts and callings from God. So yeah. we know that um, we need to change our mindset to know that we are leading that child. If it's a little boy, yes. <laughs> I know uh, with um, Deanna, our oldest daughter, and one of her little boys, he has, he has so much energy. He has so much energy. And I always say, Deanna, he is going to be a great man someday. Yeah. <laughs> he is going to yeah. be a great man someday. He's so cute. And that, yeah. And so that mindset mm -hmm. about it, that yes, um, the days are long, yeah. but the years are short. Yes, I have to remind myself of that. Yes, the often. days are long, the years are short. Right now, when everyone is little, you're going to go to bed exhausted. Mm -hmm. And you're going to think, I can't get my laundry done. Yeah. You know, I am. <laughs> yes. a spoon of peanut butter for lunch is really not the best thing yeah. to serve them for lunch. <laughs> Yeah. And you're just tired. Yeah. So you, we have to work on that, um, you know, whether it's organization, mindset, you know, just the how to schedule the day, the practical yeah. things. And that, that will come with your experience. Mm -hmm. This one is good. The door behind you is closed unless you open it. Mm -hmm. All right. So if you've had that past that's been full of trauma, mm -hmm. if you live back there, you're going to stay back there. Yeah. You're going to camp out right there. Yeah. And what is done is done. Mm -hmm. That doesn't excuse anything that was done that was bad to mm -hmm. you. Um, but what's done is done. Yeah. 
and we need to basically shake it off, stop it. Yeah. And but we stop it as believers because we are Christians and the blood of Jesus intervenes yes. Yes. and covers the sin when we ask him to do that. Yeah. Um, because uh, in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus said, ask and seek and knock. Mm -hmm. Anyone that asks will receive. Anyone that seeks will find. And to those that knock, the door will be open. Yeah. Sometimes I think we forget to also ask. You have to ask. I think that's the biggest thing is sometimes I forget to ask for the simplest thing that I don't think is a big deal. But then yeah. in reality, I just like, I never prayed about it. Yeah. And you it's know. a big deal. And then the last mm -hmm. thing before we um, move to the next thing is don't give the keys to your happiness to anyone. Oh my goodness. Yes. Whoever <laughs> is behind you, behind that closed door into your past, mm -hmm. you've turned over the key to your happiness to them. Yeah. By dwelling on it and by being angry back or by saying, well, I inherited this anger because my mom, my grandmother, my great grandmother were also angry souls. Yeah. And so, so uh, now they own your happiness. Now they own your happiness. And because you know that they had issues, we can't do anything about that. And that is a serious reality. But we can't do anything. We can't change our heritage, but we can change the legacy yeah. that we leave yeah. and that's that's where i want you to kind of dwell yeah. on changing the legacy that you will leave to your children let that be the focal point let that be I the feel focal like point. if not if you're not focusing on the legacy then you really will be focused on this is my past this is my excuse mm -hmm. for it and then and then how can you even think about legacy when today it's lessons, laundries, and lunch? You know, that's yes, yeah. that's what you have to yeah. overcome today. Yeah. But when we use lessons, laundry, and lunch to teach us, to train us, to use those tools to yeah. train our children, yeah. then, you know, lessons and legacy. laundry and lunch, yeah. that is your legacy. It is, you know, life skills that you're passing on. It is yeah. um, the love of learning that you're passing on. Yeah. And do they, are they going to hate? The, the laundry when they grow up because every time you do a load of laundry I can't get the laundry done and it's piled everywhere yeah you know what teach your little ones how to run the washing machine yes they love they can either have their own day to wash their clothes yeah. or you can separate the clothes out into piles and when they wash the towels they get to fold the towels yes. and they can put them away and actually so, be a part of the unit yes be a, it's a unit yes. yeah. yeah yeah and so that's a whole nother topic is mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. type of practical training yeah um, so we want to, um, when we're talking about overcoming the anger, and especially as it's been passed down and breaking that heritage that's been difficult, um, in Psalm 86, it says, For you, Lord, are good and ready to forgive and abundant in mercy to all those who call upon you. The whole chapter is quite good. And we want to, we're trying to break the generational habit. Yeah. So we have to call on the Lord's mercy. Mm -hmm. And we know in its lamentations um, that the Lord's mercies are new every day. Yes. So you mess up today, you're going to get up tomorrow. Yeah. And you don't have to live from, you know, yeah. 20, 50, 80 years back. You live with the Lord's new mercies today. They have a happy heart and yeah. mommy's full of, you know, love. Yeah. And we're going to try it again today. Yes, yes. <laughs> so. Yeah. And then that beautiful Psalm 89, I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. With my mouth will I make known your faithfulness to all generations. Yeah. Legacy. Yes. You are legacy. You are trying to begin a legacy. So yes. up to the next generation, to Oliver, to Ellie, yeah. to Madeline, to Millie, they will, you teach your child that, they yeah. will teach their child, and you are going to teach the the faithfulness of God to the generations because you're starting now. Yeah. yeah. If that wasn't passed on to you in your heritage, yeah. you can leave that as a legacy. Mm -hmm. And then so, also leaving the legacy to your grandchildren and their Absolutely. Grandchildren. And they're going to know that grandma, Yeah. <laughs> grandma taught us those little violins. Yes. Oh well, God. it is like whenever you and think so of much people, fun. even people now in my generation, mm -hmm. they always, whether it be their favorite songs, they're always the hymns their grandmother sang. Like you right. hear that a lot. We say that a lot. Mm -hmm. You always like so many, especially people from my generation, they're always like, oh, my grandmother loved that hymn. And it's like, oh, how powerful is that to say like, oh, this is my, my grandmother did. This is what my grandmother did. Right. And just to, just to clear, uh, make a, make a point here. Yeah. I never heard my grandparents sing a hymn. 
Yeah. I heard a lot of stuff out of them, but it wasn't yes. him singing. Yeah. <laughs> and so yeah. we um, were definitely, uh, the Lord put us in the path of someone to teach us those things. Yeah. And so we were able to, yeah. to change that up. Yeah. So I didn't come from a hymn singing heritage yes. at all. So you had to create it. We had to yes. create it, yes. So anyway, um, and then we're told in Proverbs, um, to a soft answer turns away wrath. Mm -hmm. And there's that Newton's law that says for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Mm -hmm. If I'm going to push and yell and scream at you, the reaction that we're going to get out of the children is fear, a broken spirit, and we're going to get that negative push yes. back. Yeah. And that's, and we can see that a soft answer turn away, yeah. turns away wrath. Yeah. And so when we practice the soft answer mm -hmm. or the soft communication yeah. or whatever, at least we won't yeah. have the, if we explode, they're probably going to oh, yeah. explode. Yeah. And if they don't explode now because they're afraid of you, yeah. they will explode as an adult when they get yes. out yeah. and they're going to explode all over their kids. And maybe that's what you're experiencing yes. yeah. with that anger that's been passed down as your yeah. heritage. Yeah. We all have the to, anxiety yeah. and everything that comes everything, back. Everything. It all comes, it all comes back. So Proverbs uh, is, a, is a wisdom booklet. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot there. <clears throat> So now I want to move to the topic of the four agreements. Yeah. This one I love. And this is a little book, um, The Four Agreements. Mm -hmm. And it's not written by, there's no, it's not full of scripture. Yeah. Um, the concepts, however, though, I have gone through the scripture and found this is true. Mm -hmm. This is true. And the four agreements are be impeccable with your word. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to give you the inside synopsis here. Yeah. Um, speak with integrity. Say only what you mean. Avoid using the word to speak against yourself or to gossip about others. Mm -hmm. Use the power of your word in the direction of truth and love. Mm -hmm. All right. And that speaks for itself. And we have got the, the whole book of James talking about you know, yep, how we speak reading. and all of that. <laughs> and then Ephesians 4. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good and necess for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearer. Yeah. So our words, and, and I was um, reading the book and impeccable, the definition in the book, impeccable is sinless. Yeah. That is hard. Yeah. That is very hard. We live yeah. in a day where we think that everyone needs our opinion. Everyone needs to hear what we think. Well, not always so. Mm -hmm. The next one out of the four agreements, number two, is don't take anything personally. This one is going to unlock your past. Mm -hmm. This is going to show you how to shut the door and not go back. And it says nothing others do is because of you. Yeah. It's not. What others say and do is a projection of their own reality, their own dream. When you are immune to the opinions and actions of others, you won't be the victim of, of needless suffering. Yeah. We are so afraid. What is someone going to think? Yeah. Whether it's um, that has been passed down, um, the opinions of the, the actions of others that has caused us to be this, when we can let that go. Yeah. And be just responsible for this day forward. You know, when we get married, it's yeah. from this day forward. Yeah. Okay, so don't even bring into your marriage all that ugly stuff. Because you said before God, from this day forward. Yeah. That's a good uh, perspective. Yeah. I never thought about that. That's true. <laughs> from yeah. this day yeah. forward. So whatever happened, leave it back here. Another thing about being angry, you know, in your marriage and in your home is that when we did get married... We're going to conquer the world with this man. Yes. <laughs> you know, this is the love of our life. We have yes. spent our effort and our time. We're preparing. We're, we're planning that wedding. And it is this joyful moment that is going to transition us into a life of whatever perfection we thought it was going to be. Yes. <laughs> now there are some realities, but, th yeah. but still, if we can take ourselves back to those lovely moments, what was the vision we had? Yeah. When we got married, was it when you had no children? Yeah, we're going to have a family and we're going to raise some chickens. Well, you know what? With those <laughs> chickens, when it's cold, yeah. you still have to deal with those chickens. When you have a family, you still have yeah. a pile of laundry. When your husband comes home, he's still kind of going to be hungry. Yeah. <laughs> so we still get yeah. back, back to reality. Yeah. yeah. So, all right. The, the third agreement is don't make assumptions. Mm -hmm. And this one is really powerful. Find the courage to ask questions and to express what you really want. 
Communicate with others as clearly as you can to avoid misunderstanding, sadness, and trauma. With just this one agreement, you can completely transform your life. And so if, we're, if we don't make assumptions, well, he looked at me wrong or she looked at me wrong. Mom, she, yeah. you know, and your t kids are tattling on each other because they're making an assumption. Mm -hmm. And then you carry that on. You make an assumption. Well, my husband doesn't love me anymore because, yeah. you know, or whatever we whine about, you know, because, <laughs> yeah. you know, we, that happens too. Um, yeah. Don't assume. Yeah. Because our husbands are probably generally happy people. We're the ones that are yeah. the emotional <laughs> I'm guessing I don't know your husband. So, yes. um, anyway, so uh, don't make assumptions. And then the fourth agreement is to always do your best. Yeah. Your best is going to change from moment to moment. It will be different when you are healthy mm -hmm. as opposed to sick. Under any circumstances, simply do your best mm -hmm. and you will avoid self-judgment, self-abuse, and regret. Mm -hmm. So... In part of being angry, um, you know, we probably are self-judging. We're yeah. acting out. That's what it is. It is. That's and it is. we're self-abusing yeah. and, you know, hating on ourselves. Yeah. And we've really left it up or we're, we're blaming someone else for our happiness. Yeah. We can't do that. So in as far as uh, those four agreements, mm -hmm. um, we are called to liberty in Galatians 5. Yeah. The whole chapter is on freedom in Ephesians chapter 4. And then when we get down in, into um, this agreement of do your best, we have the scripture, right? It says, wherefore, whatever you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God, 1 Corinthians 10, 13, or 31. And how can we do that? We put on the armor of God and we go about, watching mm -hmm. but we're fully armored up yeah. and we live in a day when we need to be armored up oh yeah and you know i'll just you know answer or respond to this this person and anyone else that's listening never take your armor off yeah. every part of your armor is necessary right now yeah. and always has been but it is especially important now mm -hmm. and when you have on the breastplate of righteousness and a helmet of salvation, mm -hmm. and your loins are girt about with truth, and you've got your body covered. Mm -hmm. It's as if the Holy Spirit is using the armor parts to teach us all these things and ways to live, but what if that is just a, really a symbol of the whole armor is just melted on us like we are completely covered? Yeah. Never take it off. And after a while, you know, we're strong. We can tote that armor yeah. around. Because we're strong. You're building up. We're building up. <laughs> Never build up take it you. off. Yeah. And when you feel like you are coming into judgment, maybe that parent that was angry mm -hmm. to you is still alive and is putting judgment on you. Yeah. Your good. response is, you know, well, like you shouldn't be homeschooling those children. You know, they're going to just fail. They're going to. You're not. You're not educated. <laughs> and all the arguments against it, yes. which for forty years we know what they are. Yes. Um, it is. What is the soft answer response? The soft answer. Thank you for telling me. <laughs> thank you. The, how about this? Well, it seems to be working for now. Yeah. Yeah. When you say it seems to be working for now, mm -hmm. you've evaluated that right now at this point. Yeah. You haven't got up on a soapbox and said, I will forever homeschool. Yeah. <laughs> because maybe it changes yeah. over time. Mm -hmm. And then you've given yourself an opportunity then to continue on or to pull back if you need to, because you added those two words for now. Yeah. And if a good meaning parent or an angry parent or your best friend or someone else says, you shouldn't be homeschooling because I read that homeschoolers this, this, this. And someone yeah. I know that homeschooled said this, this, and oh, this yeah. happened to them. And they didn't even learn algebra. Yeah. Well, they weren't in my school. Yeah. So they could have learned algebra. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. yeah what, whatever. Yeah. But um, it is just, well, it seems to be working for now. Yeah. I mean. Not just the homeschooling, your lifestyle, yeah. you want to move out to the country, or you even want to change your diet. Do you know yeah. how volatile yeah. just telling someone what kind of diet plan you're going to be on? Yeah. 
it's well, not it high, seems to, to be working <laughs> for now and it just yeah. whatever it is okay. and then you that is kind of a change in mindset for you too it seems to be working yeah. for now and where um and be careful of the people that are your critics not to throw out there all of yeah. the struggles that you're having yeah but to find a community a group or a, a group of mamas that can yeah understand yeah. and that you can work through mm -hmm. the issues so important to find the like -mindedness. very important to find like-mindedness and so legacy is so important and that is separate from heritage and if we have been given a heritage that isn't of godliness mm -hmm. then we need to make a plan to change it so that our legacy is something your children will appreciate. Mm -hmm. And then, and I heard years ago, and the, the person giving the workshop said, we needed to teach our children to teach to teach. Yes. Yeah. And you get through the generations. And if your children teach their children to teach to teach, yeah. it keeps going yeah. and then we have the blessings of god through the generations and not the curses that continue to yeah. drag behind and another concept visual because we all have to drive somewhere yeah. <laughs> um, is that the windshield is really wide mm -hmm. and the rear view mirror is really small yes. and yes you need to know okay we know what's happened back there and we glance back every now and then but we see the forward motion yeah and the bigger picture the bigger picture and um, uh, you can, um, the, the scripture here that I was coming in mind with that um, is in Ephesians. No, it's, it's Philippians 3.14, that we press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. What happens when we press? Mm -hmm. It is forward motion. Yes. <laughs> it is not the rear view mirror. Yeah. So the rear view mirror, while it is there, it is very small. Mm -hmm. So if you need to glance back, because you're praising God, you're getting up this morning and his mercies are new every day and you see what you left behind. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus, that I could leave it behind. Yeah. But the windshield is wide and the pressing of the mark is forward. So go with the forward motion. Yeah. And, you know, when you know where you are going is much more important than where you yeah. been, you know, the past. So your legacy building is for the forward motion. Yeah. And Christ Jesus for the purpose of Christ Jesus mm -hmm. pressing toward the mark yep. and that's like winning the prize it is. that's like winning yeah. the prize in a race yeah you know <laughs> and the person that wins the race really isn't coming up to the finish line and turning back and saying hey I wonder I wonder if the guy behind me is getting close no they just press you. and you know the, they they just win by a nose yeah. you know, or they just <laughs> get over that but they won but they, they won they did it. yes yeah. so um I want to make my conclusion here with um, two more words. Yeah. After stop it, the next part would be go within mm -hmm. for your change. The kingdom of God is within you. Luke 17, 21. The kingdom of God is within us. We tell our children from the time they're little, oh, we want you to ask Jesus into your heart. Where's your heart? Turn within it. Meet God there because he says the kingdom of God is within you. Mm -hmm. Jesus said that. So it may be that you need a friend to talk it out. You know, your support group and all like that. But ultimately, when the reality hits that and the conviction comes that the change needs to be made, yeah. the change is going to be made because you had to put the work in because you went within. Yeah. And you ask God to reveal it yep. and tell you what the next step is. Have a meeting with your creator. Yeah. In your heart. Yeah. <laughs> in your heart. For me, a lot of times it was um, pulling the blankets over my head. Yeah. And those moments before I go to bed because, you know, really we're busy from the time we get up until yeah, we go to bed. 12 and, hours, 14 mm -hmm. hours later. And then we have to have, <laughs> yes. and then we have, to have yeah. the guilt thrown at us because you didn't spend an hour in, in the oh, Word of God. Yes. And you didn't get yes. up for your children to, to do this thing. Yes. And yet the scripture is very clear to love them. Yeah. And we spend every waking hour loving and serving them. We are actually doing the word like James yeah. tells you mean us actually to do. Living the We're word. actually yes. living the Not word. Not just hearing it and reading right. it. We are living We are it. doing yeah. the word. So if you are doing the word and you are doing what God calls you to do, yeah. why are you putting up with the guilt 
that someone is telling you, well, yeah. you didn't read the Bible for an hour today. Shame on you. Yeah. No, we are yeah. living, breathing. We are, God says, yeah. you know, Jesus called us the light of the world. Yes. We are the light of the world. If you're going around lighting up your home, because you're the light of the world and those you come in contact with, you have a smile, you are doing it. You are the living word, the yes. breathing word of God. Yes. It's you. Go within, have a talk with, with your maker. God's mercies are new every morning. And then confront your situation in your heart so you can confess it and you can be ready to make that change. If you have harmed someone, you need to seek mm -hmm. their forgiveness. And then we go to the Lord's Prayer. And the Lord's Prayer said, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. The as. It's happening at the same time. Yeah. Like, I'm forgiving you. Yeah. Christ is forgiving me because I forgave you. Forgive us our sins. Mm -hmm. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive, forgive those that trespass against us. Mm -hmm. And lead us not tempt into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us from evil. We can be delivered from the torment yeah. of our past, the torment of our own mind, the mm -hmm. torment of the guilt, the self-inflicting um, wounds that we give ourselves, the, mm -hmm. the hate that we give ourselves. Confess it, and those that have hurt you, forgive, because you're going to get forgiven as you forgive, yeah. and you'll have that freedom that comes. Mm -hmm. Sit quietly and listen then to God's response to you. Go within and sit quietly and listen. Mm -hmm. And remember, agreement number two, that you are not responsible for the actions of others. The next one is don't open the door to the past, but press toward the mark. Forgive those that have wronged you and know that whatever that horrible thing is, because I had some horrible things. Yeah. Um, nothing escapes God's knowing. Mm -hmm. He knows that we're hurt. And this one was big when I, when I, when I heard this one is don't let your wounds become infected. Yes. <laughs> when we yes. dwell in it and we want that open wound all the time and it's just festering up and it's infected yeah. Yeah. and it's so much harder to heal don't let your wounds become infected the god of all knowing knows you've been hurt yeah. he also made a way for our hurts to be healed yeah. and yeah. that is what he came for to yeah. show us how to get back to the father through him yeah. and so um so we want to press toward that mark and whatsoever you do to alter the glory of god and don't look in that rear view mirror. Don't even open that back door, you know. Yeah. But if you, you know, if that's a small rear view yeah. mirror, it's a big windshield to, to move forward. So yeah. hopefully some of that is helpful. Yes, yes. I feel like it helps me. <laughs> I know this is our second time filming. And um, yeah, I, I feel like it helps every time. Yeah. Um, Sometimes you might have to disconnect from <clears throat> maybe it's family members or some, you know, maybe you have to disconnect for a time. Or maybe you, and that's okay. And that's okay. You know, it really is. It's okay, just so you can get your act together, yeah. so to speak. Yeah. Um, we go to other people, and yeah. sometimes we have to be careful that when we go to someone else to talk about our problem, it's not just so they'll tell us that we're okay. Yeah. No, yeah. you want a friend that says, "Okay, did you do this thing? Yes. Let's confess it." Oh, I feel like Let's that's where it. the older women bring in the younger women. Like, yeah. you know, as I said at the beginning, you have already walked this whole journey. Yeah. You've like, do that. You raised almost seven <laughs> kids to adulthood, <laughs> very imperfectly. Oh I my gosh! Add. Very well, imperfectly. Well, the most important thing, though, is everyone loves the Lord, and yes. I think that is a testimony in and of itself as being a successful parent. And that's something I pray that we are able to do. Yes, that. my husband and I. Yes, and and you know, just letting you all, you know, get married and do your own thing. Yeah. Yeah. And so yeah. we just have control over one 15 year old. Yes. <laughs> He's such a good kid. Though. He is That's such a joy. And, and we do enjoy him. And all of you do too, I know, yes. because he gets to go to everyone's house and yeah. do the thing. And he's everybody's fun. Uh, they call him a funkle, fun a fun uncle. Yeah. Yeah, and he's so he walks into the house, and, and all the nieces and nephews are just piled on him, yeah. you know, immediately. And um, so he knows. And he also, though, is very keen on watching each of the six couples that are married because yes. he is learning life lessons yes. by watching what every you unit do. is so differently yes so it so is different. and so yeah. he has got not just um the tail end what he does have that you didn't have is uh, uh the parents that know how to just let it go yeah <laughs> 
I almost said a four bedroom house all to himself. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's true too. Yeah. yeah. And he's got his stuff up the stairs. I'm like, okay. Yeah, you let's got get one your stuff here. You got it all over the kitchen counter, all up the stairs. You got your own bathroom and hallway. The other kids are not gonna like it. Yeah. <laughs> we always tease him. It's like he he's been he's been the one like well, mom and dad never took me on a solo vacation. Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. So we have been able, you know, we have been blessed. But at the same time, that is a beautiful <laughs> part of having a child when you're older. I was 46 when I had him. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so he was um, welcome and um, and he followed three miscarriages so he came yes I was older and the thing that was surprising to me the most surprising to me is older women yeah not thinking that was wonderful yeah oh yeah no I mean like even even now people don't think it's wonderful no. but I had a <laughs> baby number right. four mm -hmm. I mean and we yeah. are Christians yeah and we say we're pro-life and we say that um, the children are a blessing. No, I was saying in the beginning of this video, which I don't know if I um, did this the first time I recorded it, but I mentioned in the beginning of the video that I ran into that sweet mama at Goodwill. Did I tell you about that? Oh, oh yes. That yes. she was very encouraging. Oh, so mm -hmm. encouraging. And oh my goodness, that was such a rarity mm -hmm. because then this past Sunday, it was like the dead opposite. And I only had the two babies with me out in the hallway at church. And they were just like, oh, is that your only two? That's so nice. Yeah. And I was like, no, I have two more. Like, whoa, your hands must be busy. I'm like, okay, thank you. And then they kept telling me, like, oh, just go put them in the nursery. I was like, no, it's okay. They want to be with their mama. Mm -hmm. And their only response is, oh, it's okay. They'll only cry for, like, a few weeks, and they'll get over it. And I'm like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, thank you. Yeah, my experience is in the church nursery, you know, especially after mm -hmm. Derek came. And yeah. we had uh, been in a small home fellowship, and now we're in this big church because yeah. we wanted to go somewhere. But yeah. I was, you know, it was hard to have a baby yeah. when you're 46. Yeah. It took me a while to recover. Yeah. But I'm in the nursery with young moms. Yeah. <laughs> and I guarantee you I was the only one in there with some gray hair. Yeah. <laughs> and it was like. Yeah, they didn't know what to do. Well, I think because of the practically generational yeah. gap yeah. that maybe I was more of the mother that they weren't interested in at that time. They were interested in their circle, their yeah. young, you know, their, yeah. um, their peers. Yes. And I was not, even though I had a child nursing just like they yeah. were, I was not a peer. Yeah. And I have felt yeah. that yeah. in a very strong way. It's like all of way. this to say, mm -hmm. do what's best for your family and leave mm -hmm. everyone else's opinions out of it. Yes, because <laughs> oh my goodness. we just yeah. do the best. We do our best. And I have seen those mamas at Goodwill yeah. or somewhere else, and I yeah. am making more of an effort to say your yeah. children are beautiful. Yeah. Oh, it makes the world a difference. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Like that's the, uh, no. Well, I was at oh, Costco. Yeah. I was at Costco, and two lanes over, there was a lady checking out yeah. with her children. Yeah. I mean, there were six of them, Aww. and they were all little. And Aww, she so had nice. the baby in her hands, and she was just very quietly giving direction to those children. And they were putting those groceries up on the Aww. thing and working together. Yeah. And I could see the snickers and the stares from the people around yeah. them, and my heart. But I wasn't close enough oh, to I speak. Hate that. And oh, it just I was grinning. Yeah. I was like, yeah, God bless that woman today. Yeah. Um, yeah. because she did what society says is not good, yeah, and she stood yeah. for her family and she took them in to teach them life skills. They were learning to shop, yeah. they were learning to work together, and they yeah. were pushing that big cart. And mommy yeah. had the baby, baby was happy, yeah, yeah, <laughs> children were happy, they yes. were happy to do what they were doing. Yeah. And someone looks down their nose at them, like, yeah. Oh, how dare you have that many children? Oh, Which one goodness. would you like me to give back? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, don't do that. That's the hardest thing, mm -hmm. I think, going out in public. I think that's a lot of my social anxiety postpartum this time around has been that like I'm already majorly introverted socially anyway. <laughs> so when I go out into the store and you attract the attract yes. the stairs, like that's my mm -hmm. least my least favorite. Yes, this yeah. is the child that do not look at me when she was little in yeah. my arms. Please don't look at me. Yes. I'm not gonna look back at you. Yeah. <laughs> And yeah. nor am I going to smile. <laughs> yeah. And now my kids are like that. I'm like, where'd you get that from? <laughs> It's like, what do you mean you don't want anyone to talk to you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you yeah. never know what your children are going to do when yeah. you are putting that day to day and you are tired. And mamas, I know you're tired. Mm -hmm. I know you are. And I know you're doing wonderful work and you're choosing curriculum mm -hmm. and you're planning your diet and you're keeping your house clean and you're doing your laundry. And we had a whole workshop on lessons, laundry and lunch, yes. how to put it all together. And um, you have to do that without regard to what this world is saying. Yes. 
you are going to serve God by serving that family because he's called you to it. Yeah. And when he calls you, he will equip you. Oh, yes. Yeah. So if we can just do the two words, stop it and go within Mm -hmm. to make the changes that we need to make over ourselves. And then do the work. Do the work. Yeah. It's worth it. (laughs) It's worth it. It's a a good, yeah, it's a good job. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. It pays in the future. It does. And you've experienced that. Yeah, yeah. I've experienced that. And I've been the beneficiary of Mm. that as well. Yeah, now you're bringing your little children over and I practice a violin with them. And I'm not even a violin player, right? You know all that. I I play the bassoon, orchestra, play in the bassoon. And I really, one of my anger things, Donald, uh, Daddy asked me, how did I conquer this as we were talking about it? Mm -hmm. I said, well, there were only really two big things. One was... Helping them practice the violin yeah. because I was a wind player and I yeah. knew nothing of it. Yes. And you were little yeah. and it was up to me to help you practice the violin. And I couldn't do that. Yeah. And I was so frustrated. It was like, whoa, what do I do? So within weeks, I yeah. took lessons as well. Yeah. Opened it all up. You did that with everything. I feel like you did it with algebra. Yeah. Before you taught it, you did the course yourself. Remember? Yes. Going to music camp, yes, I'd yeah. let y'all go into orchestra to play, and I'd stay back in my room working we'll the that. algebra book. <laughs> yes, <laughs> because you yeah. know if God calls us, He equips us, and so we just need to keep doing that. So I yeah. had learned violin, viola, and cello because those are the instruments y'all yeah. played, and the the two that had some flute lessons and some clarinet lessons. Now I was fine. I yeah. I got that. I was all over that. Yeah. But and you know no one wanted to play the bassoon or no one has come forth yet to <laughs> want to, to play, play the bassoon. bassoon. I've got to yeah. will it to someone. Yeah. And so far, I'm drawing a blank. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, but goodness. it's music is a wonderful thing, yeah. and I had to branch out to the other yeah. instruments. I told the the violin teacher, I'm like, well, you know, I'm going to take these lessons, and I took viola lessons because as a musician, I knew if I had two yeah. violins and a viola and a cello coming up, then yeah, I'd have my own ensemble. Yeah. <laughs> so I took the viola lessons, mm-hmm. and I said, really, I just feel like a disloyal string player, and she <laughs> cracked up. I said, well, there's just like dividing line, you know, the winds are it's back totally here and the strings are up here. Yeah. And we laughed about that, but I I managed, and then yeah. when my my wind playing buddies found out that I was taking string lessons. It was like, really? Yeah. You know, so, <laughs> but anyway, it's all good. Yeah. It's all good. So I really love having your yeah. children over and we oh, practicing okay. those little violins. They love it too. So adorable. Yeah. So thank you for yeah. letting me ramble on. Yeah. Thank Hopefully you for being here. I hope you guys were encouraged and yeah, I'd love to know kind of your background or experience or if this helped you. Uh, if it did, let us know in the comments below or if you want us to do another video to talk about some other topics, what those topics might be. If you're interested, if I can convince you to come back sometime, maybe. maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, until my next video, I hope you guys have a great day, whatever you're doing, and God bless. Thanks. Bye. Bye.